Everybody's a suspect. Coming to get you, Barbara. Mitram is the 2021 drama directed by Justin Kurzel and it stars Caleb Landry Jones, Judy Davis and Essie Davis. Hi guys, my name's Barry and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. No, it's not really a horror movie that I'll be doing a movie review for today, but it has horrific scenes in this film and I think it's probably best to talk about it anyway. Um, there's no point in saying there's going to be spoilers in the movie because it's a real life story so if you know the real life story then obviously you know what happens in the movie. Events leading up to the 1996 Port Arthur massacre on Tasmania in an attempt to understand why and how the atrocity occurred. I want to give a quick shout out to Emma over at Spooky Astronauts. She's actually over in Australia. She was the one that um, brought my attention to Nitram because if it wasn't for her I wouldn't have known this movie existed. That's how low key this movie has been. Um, I knew about the Port Afro Massacre, of course, but I just didn't know about this movie that came out. So thanks, Emma, for bringing it to my attention. First, let's talk about the story. I think most of you who are watching this review will probably be watching it because um, of the story of the Port Arthur Massacre. Now, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, you don't see the massacre occur in this film. It's not about seeing it step by step because that would be maybe too much to watch, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm being honest. So I think the lead up to the massacre is what happens in this movie. Right from the start to right up to the very end of the movie, that's when the massacre is about to take place. And in fact, you do see a couple of people getting killed um, at the end of the film, just letting you know that the massacre is about to take place. But it's the story and the lead up to this. Now, I knew about the Port Arthur massacre in 1996. Uh, unfortunately, and they do mention this in the movie, I'm from Scotland, well not unfortunately I'm from Scotland, but unfortunately there was a, a massacre in March 1996 in Dunblane, Scotland, uh, in a school. Um, the killer was Thomas Hamilton and he killed um, a number of primary one pupils, which was the worst um, massacre that's ever happened in this country. Um, and there's gun laws after that, you know, we had stricter gun laws in 1996 from, from that very day onwards. And they do mention the the Dunblane massacre in this film, and I think it was very hard hitting because it kind of hit home a little bit because it's just it was just an awful thing to happen. I think the fact that they're I don't think they're maybe using that excuse, but it looks like he's used that massacre from where where I'm from as motivation for what he was planning on doing. Maybe he's thinking Thomas Hamilton can do it. He's killed innocent people. Um, I can do it as well. So I think um, seeing that, just seeing that one scene, it's, it was horrible. Now, I don't know what the, the filmmakers were trying to do with this one. And I think this may be one of the reasons why some people might not want to watch this movie or just won't like this movie. But it's almost like they're giving Martin a reason for doing what he'd done. They're giving him an excuse for what he'd done. And it's not all about that because yes, and I feel guilty for saying this, but half of the movie, I feel sorry for this guy. Now his name is Martin Bryant and the movie's called Nitrum. The reason it's called Nitrum is basically it's Martin round the other way and people called him Nitrum in school or Nitrum in school because they, they, they said he had nits and that just so happens to be Martin backwards. So <laughs> yeah. I felt sorry for him in this film and I, I know I shouldn't have and I think that's what they're trying to make you feel. They're trying to make you feel sorry for this person but at the same time know there's this beast inside of him that's just going to explode at the end of the movie because not everyone who has problems ends up like this guy, obviously. So yes, he has excuses for not being a normal person but at the same time, there's other people out there that are probably in a worse position but still don't do the atrocities that this guy done at the end of the movie. So yes, I felt sorry for his character, only because of the certain things that was happening in his life. You know, people didn't like him, people thought he was strange, they called him a retard. He lost his dad, um, he lost his only friend, even though it was his fault. So yeah, there's things that happen to him, but there's things that happen to other people in this world that, you know, they try and live with and they don't do things that he done. So yes, the story is about him and the story is about 
almost like him telling his story and the reasons why he'd done what he'd done. So I like that aspect of the movie, but I know that some people might watch this, especially people from Australia or Tasmania or whatever, they might look at this and think, I'm not watching that. And, and it might be the same for me. If I watched a movie about Thomas Hamilton, you know, the, the guy who killed all those kids in Dunblane, if I watched a movie about him and feeling sorry for him, I would probably be disgusted by it. Let's look at some of the characters. We've obviously spoken about Nitram, Martin. The other main characters, we've got Helen, played by Essie Davis. Now, I will talk about her performance and everyone else's performance after I talk about the characters. But Helen was this loner woman who had lots of money. Um, and she was like a cat lady or a dog lady. She just wanted a friend and he just happens to turn up one day and asks if, he wants to, if she wants her lawn mode. And they became friends. And they bounced off each other because they needed each other. They were outcasts and they fit well together. It was probably a recipe for disaster. You know, there were scenes in this film where she was looking at him and she said, you look like a movie star. As soon as she said that to him, I burst out crying because I just felt so sorry for her because she's not seen the world the way she should see it. And the only person that's given her any attention is this Martin and I, I just felt so sorry for her and I, I kind of broke down for her a few times because there's things that she'd done the way she was you just felt so sorry for her she was like the opposite of Martin she obviously had some problems as well but she dealt with her problems in a more mature manner whereas Martin didn't I also think because Martin got on so well with her because they got they had these issues that when she died in the movie obviously caused by him when she died in the movie, he almost lost a piece of himself. In fact, he lost a massive part of himself. His, die, his dad died as well in the movie. And he didn't really show any emotion for his dad dying. Even though his dad always looked out for him. His dad always felt sorry for him. His dad always made excuses for him. But that wasn't enough for Martin. He wanted more. And I think Helen gave him more. If you look at his dad, I really felt sorry for his dad in this movie as well. Nothing went right for him. He tried to buy a, a farmhouse. Somebody outbid him. He, he just wasn't getting the break that he needed. He had a son who everyone hated. And he always had to try and defend and make excuses for him. But at the same time, he was also embarrassed by him. But he never let his son know that. He always looked up to his son. He always said, you're going to do things well. You're going to help me run the farm. He always had positive things to say to and about his son. But then when you look at his mother, she was one of the characters that I couldn't really see through. And I think they meant that because she was a tough mother. She obviously felt responsible for everything that Martin ever done, even before the massacre. And there was times where Martin would say, beat, beat his dad up. And she never flinched. She wasn't fearful. She just stood back and watched. Almost like she was looking at him thinking, you know, I can see what Martin is becoming and I'm not going to do anything about it. It was almost like a guinea pig to her the way Martin acted, and she was fascinated by it all. That is the four main characters, guys, and if the Academy Awards, if the Oscars don't recognise this movie, if the Academy don't recognise any of these performances, I'm going to give up on the Academy Awards. You know, when the Babadook came out and Essie Davis was in the Babadook, the Babadook never get mentioned. Essie Davis never get mentioned. The director, Jennifer Kent, never get mentioned. Now, this movie's came along and I don't know how any of these four actors could not be mentioned in the Oscars in January or February, whenever it is, 2022. If this movie's not mentioned, if Caleb Landry Jones' name is not mentioned, if Essie Davis' name is not mentioned... I'm just going to go like that. What What is going on? I don't know what it is about Essie Davis. She plays Helen. Every time I see her, no matter what she's doing, even, even if she's not speaking, Essie Davis is absolutely incredible. She is one of the best, if not the best actress working today. She is Australian and she does a lot of Australian things and it's a shame because she's not really getting noticed in Hollywood. But anything I've seen Essie Davis in, I've been in complete awe of her. She is 
unbelievable and she is no less than unbelievable in this movie. Caleb Landry Jones, I'm glad he's in it and he's playing an Australian in this movie because maybe that will get some Americans watching this film as well and starting to understand the story of the Port Arthur Massacre at least, but also recognising Caleb Landry Jones as an actor. He does a great Australian accent in this one. I think he mentioned that he watched reruns of Neighbours and Home and Away, which is probably what I would do to try and get the accent going for the Australian accent. But honestly... You have to see this movie to understand how amazing his performance was. I thought Jake Gyllenhaal was incredible this year with The Guilty. And I didn't think anyone was going to top his performance. But best actor right now. And nothing, and I can tell you this right now because there's only a few weeks left. Nothing is going to top Caleb Landry Jones' performance in this movie. It was out of this world. Now if we go back to the story, you know, it's, it's building itself up in the way that the movie is directed. They're building us up as an audience, knowing what we're about to, maybe not witness because we don't witness everything, but we know what everyone is going to go through by the end of this movie as soon as he sits in that diner. And the way that it's built up is incredible. You you get sudden urges every time something happens that's connected to what's going to happen. You get so angry while we are watching the movie. You know, there's a scene, and this was horrifying. He goes into that gun store and asks for a gun, the guy's like, have you got a license? He's like, no. And they kind of think to themselves, well, we're getting 8,000 Australian dollars here. Let's just slip it under the radar. Certain things that go on in this film that could be so preventable was horrible to watch. When Martin was in the doctors, they're kind of shunning it off just to get rid of him. And you're like, you know, again, I'm not making excuses for, for this guy, but if he got the professional help that was available to him, maybe this wouldn't happen. If he was questioned about his gun licence, maybe this wouldn't happen. If he didn't meet Helen, who also needed help, then he wouldn't get the money, he wouldn't get the funds to buy the guns for this to happen. There's so many things that could have been done to prevent the atrocities that happened in Port Arthur on that day, and nobody cared. And that's, that was the, the most horrifying part about this film. Nobody cared. And I know that it, some of it might be dramatised, but I was reading about it before the movie. I was reading about it after the movie. And it's almost on point. You know, this guy was just left to do what he wanted to do. This family was left. The place, again, I don't know what Port Arthur was like at the time, but the place looked bleak. It looked like nothing was happening. Nobody cared about anything. People might have loved each other, etc., etc., but nothing was happening. Nobody cared about anything until this one fateful day. And I think if you didn't know about the massacre until this movie, you will read about it and you'll cry. You'll cry and cry. After the movie finished, I cried for five, ten minutes. It was gut-wrenching. The whole movie was haunting, but I think probably the most haunting and horrifying scene for me was that last scene. That scene when he asked for... The, the fruit juice and the fruit cup and he sat down and you can see and again I felt it was horrible for him at the same time as I was so angry with him as well he was sitting eating his fruit cup knowing that this is it and everybody you know, he's looking at everyone and they don't have a clue what's about to happen to them and as he's eating this I'm like you know obviously it's going to happen I'm like don't do it you know, you've got that thing in your mind that says just don't do it and he stands up with that gun that's it. If you've seen this movie, guys, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think of it. If you haven't seen it, you have to prepare yourself for what you're about to see because you're never going to forget it, honestly. As, as horrifying as it is, and as much as maybe some people wouldn't want to see this movie, I think it's an important movie to watch, not only just for the events of what happened, but for mental health, for gun laws, anything like that. It's very important stuff. So I recommend that you see it if you haven't saw it. It is one of the best films of the year, guys. Um, one of the saddest films I've ever seen. So leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.